Hello and welcome to another video by Perfect Scores. This is Preetam Dharkar and the topic that we are doing right now is 11th grade biology. So we've just finished with a basic classification of the plant kingdom and we've just started with the classification of the animal kingdom. So far we have just covered uh, the introduction to this classification. We know that the animal kingdom is divided on the basis of levels of organization into two major types one is the organisms that have a cellular level of uh, organization that is phylum porifera and this is the phylum that we have covered so far there are many others as well that have a tissue or an organ or an organ system level of organization and these are further divided into two depending on the symmetry so if the organism has radial symmetry, then you can have two different phylums from that. One is phylum coelentrata, which is going to be the next phylum that we are going to discuss. And the other one is phylum tinophora. Now there are many organisms that have a tissue organ, organ system level of organization, but their symmetry is not radial. Their body can be divided into two symmetrical halves on the basis of only one plane. So we say that they have a bilateral symmetry. On the basis of this, they are divided into three depending on absence or presence of a body cavity. If they do not have a body cavity, they are called acelomates. And only one phylum falls into that, which is phylum platyhelminthes. Then there are some organisms that have a false coelom, so we call them pseudo coelomates. And again, only one phylum is there under that, which is phylum astralminthes. And the remaining ones have a true coelom, so they are called coelomates. That includes humans as well. Now, in this, there are approximately six phylums. You have phylum annelida. Phylum Arthropoda, Phylum Mollusca, Phylum Hemichordata, Phylum Chordata, and also Phylum Echinodermata. So these are the phylums that we will be studying. We've already covered Porifera. We are going to start with Celentrata and then cover Tinophora, Platyhelminthes, Astralminthes, Annelida, Arthropoda, Mollusca, Hemichordata, Chordata, and Echinodermata. And before we get started with Celentrata, don't forget to watch this website and watch more videos related to this topic and many other topics at perfect-scores.com. If you want to share our page and like us, you can do that at Facebook. And if you have any suggestions or requests or some kind of questions or feedback, you can always send it to perfectscores89 at gmail.com. So let's get started with the next phylum, which is Celentrata. So phylum Celentrata, and as the name suggests, members of this phylum are going to be called Celentrates. So that is the phylum that we are about to start now. Now, sealant traits by definition, um, they're also called nidarians. And they're usually marine, mostly marine. Sometimes, very rarely, they can be freshwater, but they're definitely aquatic. They can also be sessile or free swimming. And the most common member is the jellyfish. And they have a radial symmetry, which we've already done. And there are basically two kinds of sidarians or nidarians or coelentrates. One is with the structure of a medusa and one is with the structure of a polyp. I'll give you an example of a medusa that's going to be a jellyfish. So the body cavity is little shaped like this. Remember this is a rough drawing. It may not be so good. Alright, so that is how the body looks like in a medusa, in a polyp, it's going to be the opposite. 
So this is the central cavity surrounded by these tentacle like structures. So that is what these cylindrates look like. So a medusa and a polyp. Now how do these animals, they get the name of nidarians? This is because of nidoblasts or also known as nidocytes. These are nothing but they contain some kind of stinging capsules that are called nematocytes inside them and these are present all over the tentacles that means over here in case of a polyp and over here in case of a medusa. So that is the purpose of these nidoblasts or nidocytes that contain the nematocytes within them and many different purposes are solved. It can be used to uh, stay stuck to a substratum or to defend themselves, to endanger a prey, to capture a prey for all these purposes. The tissue level of organization is present. There are no organs but just tissues and all of these animals are diploblastic in nature. And all of them, they have a central vascular cavity. So these are some of the features that you need to know about this phylum. There is presence of a central vascular cavity, which is this one in case of Medusa and this one in case of a polyp. And there is a mouth which is located on the hypostome. That would be opening over here and the opening over here. Digestion is not intracellular. It takes place outside the cells as well. So it is both extracellular and intracellular. Some of the nidarians, for instance, uh, corals, they have a skeleton composed of calcium carbonate. And there are others also. And cidarians usually exhibit these two basic body forms. The first one, which is Medusa, it is sessile, that means it can move and keeps floating around and it's cylindrical. The second one is umbrella shaped. This one is free swimming. So the example of this is a jellyfish. Example of this is a hydra or adomatia. There are some cnidarians that can uh, be present in both a medusa form as well as a polyp. So they keep, uh, you know, alternating between different generations and that process is called metagenesis. That means one generation is a polyp, the other generation is a medusa. So one thing you need to know how to convert from a medusa into a polyp. Now from a medusa into the polyp, the reproduction is sexual in nature. But from a polyp into a medusa, the reproduction is asexual in nature. So let me remove this. It's just a single S. So let's quickly revise what we have done so far in this phylum. We know in this phylum, Celentrata, these organisms are also called as nidarians because of the presence of these nidoblasts or nidocytes that contain stinging cells called nematocytes. They have a tissue level of organization. The digestion is both intra and extracellular. They are diploblastic and exist in two forms, the medusa form and the polyp form. Example of a medusa is jellyfish, which is usually free swimming. An example of a polyp is hydra, which is sessile and usually uh, does not float in the water, but stays at the same place. Now, there are some nidarians that can even alternate between these forms. And they exhibit a process called metagenesis. If it wants to move from a medusa into a polyp form, it has to undergo sexual reproduction. Otherwise, if it has to undergo change from a polyp into a medusa, it has to undergo asexual reproduction. Another thing common is that they have a central vascular cavity, which is this highlighted over here. And the mouth is usually present on the hypostome, which is this part that is opening of the cavity. And one example I had given was of corals that have a layer of calcium carbonate as well. So that was all the basic stuff about cylindrata that you need to know. So let's move on to the next phylum which is going to be tenophora. Now in phylum tenophora, the animals are known as tenophores. And 
Usually, they are also known as sea walnuts or even as comb jellies. Now, some of the common features are that they are exclusively marine. That means only marine. No fresh water or fresh water uh, tenophores can be found. Another is that they are radially symmetrical, just like. The earlier one that we did that includes hydra and jellyfishes. So radially uh, they have symmetry. They are diploblastic and they have a tissue level of organization. Tissue level of organization. Now, how the body is composed of is, it has about eight external rows of comb plates. And these comb plates have cilia, so we can say that these are ciliated. And the basic purpose is they help in movement or in locomotion. Digestion in this case is going to be both extracellular just like hydra and intracellular one more feature of these animals is bioluminescence that means they give off light it emits light on its own and it is there in most of them sexes are not separate so it's basically a hermaphrodite reproduction is only by sexual means Fertilization is external and there is no direct development, it's indirect. So indirect development along with external fertilization. Some examples are tenoplena and pleurobrachia. So let's quickly revise what we have done in this phylum, Tenophora. We know that they are exclusively marine, they have radial symmetry, uh, symmetry, they are diploblastic and they have a tissue level of organization. Now the astonishing feature is that they have eight external rows of comb plates and they are all ciliated because the cilia help in locomotion. The digestion can either be external, that means extracellular or it can also be intracellular. Plus, one more feature is bioluminescence, and examples are tenoplena and pleurobrachia. The reproduction is only sexually. Fertilization is external, and there is indirect development. I'll give an example of uh, an organism, how it looks like. So, for example, this is the organism. It's going to have eight rows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, eight rows of complets. And then it's also going to have some cilia for the movement. So that is how the external structure is going to look like. So I hope that was clear enough. And uh, what we've covered in this video so far is two major phylums. That is, we've done the cilentrates and we have done the tenophora. So the next phylum that we have to cover in this particular video is phylum platyhelminthes. Now this phylum. Platyhelminthes. The name might imply something, and uh, they have a torso ventrally flattened body, so they are also known as flat worms. Dorsal and ventral flatness is there. These are mostly endoparasites that live inside other animals, including human beings. So let me write that down, endoparasitic. They are also bilaterally symmetrical. So bilateral symmetry is present in them. They are triploblastic. 
and they are acelomate that is they do not have any kind of body cavity the level of organization is organ system or organ level not organ system but just organ level of organization two important characteristics are the presence of hooks and the presence of suckers especially in the parasitic forms now some of them usually absorb uh, nutrients directly through the body surface some use these hooks to hook themselves up and suckers to get the nutrition now there are specialized cells present in them that help in osmoregulation and excretion that means level of nutrients and ions plus also in excretion sexes are not separate so basically they are hermaphrodites fertilization is internal so internal fertilization and many larval stages are present before the organism gets fully developed into an adult so it's indirect development with lots of larval stages two of the most common ones uh, common examples are tapeworm and planaria now one thing you should know about planaria is it has a very high regeneration capacity very high means even if you cut it into two it can generate itself once again and the other one is a flatworm which is also the common name of this group as you just done and the other one that i told you about was the tapeworm i'll also give you the scientific names the tapeworm is commonly known as stenia and uh, one more is there called liver fluke that's also a commonly known organism that causes a lot of diseases that is known as fasciola so liver fluke basically looks little simple just like this so it has hooks and it has a sucker as well tapeworms it basically has um, a mouth or a face like structure and then lots of other extensions and it can grow up to some amazing heights of a few meters as well so you never know how big a tapeworm can get so let's revise what we've done so far for this phylum we've done that they are usually endoparasites that means they live within other bodies they have a bilateral symmetry that means if you cut it like this this half and this half are going to be looking the same they are going to be symmetrical they are triploblastic in their organization acelomate that means that the body cavity or the coelom is not present in them the level of organization is still organs no organ systems are there so these specialized organs are the hooks and the suckers for deriving some kind of nutrition there are special cells that are present in them for osmoregulation and excretion about the reproduction they are hermaphrodites so the sexes are not separate fertilization is internal and the development takes place through many larval stages an example is planaria that has extremely high regeneration capacity flatworms which is also the common name tapeworm known as stenia which is drawn over here and liver fluke which is also known as fasciola so so far we have covered three different phylums in this particular video we have done coelenterates we have done tenophoria tenophora and we have done platyhelminthes so that is all for this video and in the next video we are going to start with the next phylum that is going to be eschelminthes and then we will go on to phylum analegia so thank you so much for watching this video and keep watching more only at perfect scores thank you so much